This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Okay, let's carry on with the last part of Chapter 2. And first of all, look at Paragraph 5. That, although it's a very small paragraph, and it's on the terminology, it is actually quite important. Um, well, don't look at the paragraph now, I'll talk about it. But if you think back to the example we did earlier in this chapter, we paid out money for various reasons. We paid out cash because we bought a car. We paid out cash because we bought goods for resale. We bought a shop. Um, we paid electricity. Well, there are two main reasons for paying cash. There's, you're either buying assets like we bought a car, or you're paying expenses, such as when we paid electricity. And we give the two types different names. And now this can be confusing, so be very careful. First of all, capital expenditure. That's what we call it when we're paying out to buy assets. You're spending money on assets. So when we bought the car, it was capital expenditure. When we bought the shop, it was capital expenditure. Now, the first reason to be careful, of course, is don't confuse it with the word capital on its own. Capital on its own is money owing to the owner. Capital expenditure is when you've spent money buying assets. The other reason for spending money, though, we call revenue expenditure. And revenue expenditure um, is what we call it when you pay expenses. So in our example, we spent money on electricity. Um, equally, we could have paid rent or telephone. Again, we've spent money, but we've no asset to show for it. All we've done is paid an expense. Now, again, the word's confusing, because revenue on its own means income, your sales. Revenue expenditure, though, is when you're spending money. The reason we call it revenue expenditure is the reason we had to pay electricity was in order to be able to run the business uh, and to be able to make the sales. So it's just terminology, but do be careful. The other bit, the final bit in this chapter, um, is paragraph 6, the accounting equation. And this is something that's tested quite a lot. It'll certainly be uh, one or two questions in your exam uh, using this equation. If you think for the last time, back to our example at the beginning of the chapter, after every transaction, we did the little statement, and always the assets were equal to the capital plus the liabilities. Always. The assets, what the business owned, was equal to what the business owes. Anything to the owner was capital, to other people was liabilities. And we kept repeating that. That should be clear. Uh, you can easily rearrange that, in that surely, um, the if we subtract liabilities from each side, the assets minus the liabilities if for instance we close down, sell all our assets, pay the liabilities whatever's left, the difference must be owed to the owner, it must be equal to the capital. Another word for assets minus liabilities is net assets. If ever you see the term net assets, it's assets minus liabilities. 
And so again, at every stage, look back at our example if you need, but after each transaction, the net assets are equal to the amount of the owner, the capital. But of course, after each transaction, they kept changing as we sold goods and made a profit. Uh, the capital changed. We started the year with capital of 10,000. We ended up at the end of the year with capital, I think it was 12,000, but it was different. Um, and similarly, the net assets will change. At any point in time, the net assets equal capital. But over the year, or over the period, they will both change. Which leads us to the third line. The change over a year, or the increase in the net assets, if the net assets change, the capital must change. It must equal the increase in the capital. I won't keep repeating this, but look back at our example. The net assets started at 10,000. By the end of the year, they'd changed, but equally the capital started at 10,000. By the end of the year, it had changed. They must both change by the same amount. Finally, though, why does, or why did, the capital change? There are only three reasons ever why the amount owed to the owner will change. Remember ours. The owner was owed 10,000. Why were they owed a different amount by the end of the year? The three reasons are, firstly, any extra capital paid in. If they paid in any more capital, it didn't happen in ours, I know, but surely if the owner had paid in another 10,000, they'd have automatically been owed an extra 10,000. So any capital introduced will increase the capital. Why else? Well, of course, what did happen in ours was the profit. The business made a profit during the period. Automatically, the amount owed to the owner went up. The only other reason, instantly, sorry, a profit, clearly we could have a negative profit, a loss, but a loss is simply a negative profit. The only other reason is that the owner took money out. If the owner withdraws money, then the amount owed, the capital, will fall. And those are the only three reasons why the capital will have changed. So over a period, the increase in net assets will equal capital introduced plus profit less withdrawals. You must learn that equation. Take however long it needs to check you're happy with where it came from, but then learn it and make sure you can apply it. You will be asked one or two multiple choice questions on this in your exam. Let me show you how. Let's turn to page 13. There's two examples there. I'll do one. You do the second one, and then check with me. Example 1. On the 1st of January, the net assets of a business were 25,000. On 31st of December, they'd increased to 32,000. During the year, the owner had introduced more capital of 10 and had made drawings of 7, and we're required to calculate the profit. Well, it's simply using that equation. The increase in net assets equals any capital introduced plus any profit minus any withdrawals. And what do we know here? The increase in net assets. Well, at the beginning of the year, they were 25, and at the end of the year, they were 32. So surely the increase... is 7,000. And that increase is equal to capital introduced, which here is 10, plus 
the profit, well, we don't know that. That's what we're trying to calculate, less the drawings. And so it's simply now rearranging. Surely, check me, please, but the profit uh, must be equal to uh, 7 minus 10 plus 7. The profit must be equal to 4,000. There is the profit for the year. So although it's easy to make silly mistakes rearranging, in principle, very straightforward, provided, of course, you've learnt the equation. OK, we'll pause this recording. Have a go at example two. When you think you've got the answer, uh, press play on the recording, continue and just check you got it right. All right, check with me that you got it right. Example two. Uh, this time, we told the net assets at the beginning and end of the year. There's no extra capital. We told the profit. This time, we need to work out the drawings. Well, increase in net assets. Capital introduced, plus profit, less drawings. Fill in what you know. The net assets went up from 118 to 150, so the increase is 32,000. Capital introduced, zero. Profit, 54. Drawings is what we're after. So again, rearrange, and the drawings or withdrawals must be equal to 54 minus 32, 22,000. And there we are.